And the other thing is, to, is it, it's quite possible, and, and we know this from, from uh, measurements, to reduce uh, domestic hot water use into the 150 liter per day for a household uh, from, uh, without really any loss of quality of life. And the, the average is around 225, so that's, a, that's, a, that's really gravy. That's, um, so, so then it gets to be important, how, how do you heat the water? Um, and can you can you reduce that? Well, they, one, a very simple way to reduce it is with drain water heat recovery. Another um, this drain water heat recovery makes lists of it's very high up on the on the on the sort of best payoff kind of uh, list. Um, uh, but but you need to plan the house to make take full advantage of it. You want to try and configure the bathroom so that you can run the shower drains down the same stack so that you can collect it all with one with one unit. And effectively, what happens is that the 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 shower water goes through the inside of the pipe, and the the water going to the hot water tank goes through the goes through a coil wrapped around the pipe, and they're both traveling at the same rate. So it's the the piece of pipe, very simple, no moving parts, lasts forever. Uh, will actually recover uh, 40 percent of of uh, 40 and some up to 50 and 60 percent of the uh, of the heat in a shower. And showers are the biggest single component of of domestic hot water use in in most houses. So then it gets to be also very important to however you, how you heat that water is, is really important. Most ordinary hot water heaters are, are in the 50% uh, seasonal uh, efficiency range. It's possible to get um, uh, up into the, into the 90s with condensing uh, demand hot water tanks. Electric is, is closer to 100, although it drops a little bit depending on the insulation. So insulating your hot water tank is always uh, uh, important. Uh, the, uh, most houses, uh, a quarter of their total uh, heating energy for hot water is actually just standby loss. It's, it's, uh, it, it really makes a big difference. So electricity consumption becomes the next biggest uh, component of, of energy use in some of these houses. And again, it's efficient appliances, uh, efficient lighting plans, brushless DC motors for, for heating and ventilating. Um, one of the things to, to plan into the house in the wiring plan is, is phantom load control. Try and have a plug in every room that you can put those little things that never go off into so that you can just turn off a switch and they, and they all go off. Um, you know, not the alarm clock, but, uh, but everything else. And uh, it, it's also worthwhile to put in a, uh, a monitoring system so that you can see what electricity you're using. We, we find that you can save about 5% just by being aware of where the energy's going and when it's being used. Um, very important to, to uh, spec the, the most energy efficient HRV you can find. This is something that the Passive House people have been working a lot on. Uh, there are some extremely high energy efficient uh, units available that we're, we're starting to look into. But in, in, the, in the meantime, there's some, but ductwork is very important as well. I mean, designing the, the minimizing the length of the ductwork and uh, getting good airflow is, is really important to the, uh, to the efficiency. So just going to go back to the to the list here. It's it's um, it's hard to kind of get all this stuff in one uh, in one go. So I'm I'm not going to spend too much time on mechanical equipment, uh, um, but. Uh, we're just going out looking at our checklist. We've we've uh, we've reduced energy as much as we can, and now it's time to start uh, looking at uh, how we're going to get the rest that that of the energy that we need. Um, so all these. The reductions in the hot water load, the reduction in lighting and appliance, the efficiency of all your mechanical equipment, all of that's been plugged back into the hot, mo the hot 2000 model. You know how much domestic or how much passive solar you're going to get, and so you've, you've got a target number that'll tell you how much um, renewable energy you need to collect on the roof to, to get to zero, and. This is a comparison of the of the the houses that we've we've done so far, just against an ordinary house, and you can see um, that we we've gotten our total energy consumption down in the in the 10,000 kilowatt hour a year range, um, which is still a pretty big amount of renewable energy to to collect. Um, 
the, you know, the Bonnie Dune house, uh, we, we're, we'd need about 17,000, just not likely to, to be able to get it. And you can see where with a typical house at, at closer to 40,000, uh, you, you'd, you'd need uh, the whole block worth of roofs to, to really do it. Now, now that we're in the, in the 10,000 kilowatt hour year range, we've got, some, we've got some options to take advantage of simplified mechanical systems as well that'll start to pay for some of this stuff. So uh, just a quick comparison between solar thermal and PV. Uh, um, you know, on a, on a cost basis, it's less expensive to do a smaller, a small domestic solar hot water system, something in the neighborhood of two collectors. You, you can get it installed with, with, with the, uh, the tank and everything for the, something in the range of, of um, uh, four to five dollars. PV is getting much less expensive. Uh, it's it's possible to do a, a good size system uh, for five to six dollars per per kilowatt hour. Now this is not the same as a price per per watt, which is what they often talk about. Uh, a thousand watt system will will produce more than a thousand watts. So I'm measuring the the say 1,300 kilowatt hours a year that that system will produce if to to get this five dollars per annual kilowatt rather than you know the cost per watt. The panels are sold uh, on a watt basis. So from from that and from the areas that that we've used, I pulled out a number to to look at. Um, in effect, the efficiency, and you can see that the that the solar thermal system sized properly. Uh, I'll give you an example: a couple that, or one that's not, um, can produce quite a bit more energy per square meter than than PV that's in 16, which is fairly decent uh, percent range of efficiency. So base is always going to be an issue. So it's tempting to to uh, say, well, gee, if that's the case, let's just make this, the solar thermal system bigger and shrink the PV system, save money and and space. And that was kind of the mistake we made in, in Riverdale. Um, but, but a few other considerations. Uh, the solar thermal needs storage space. The PV use the grid for storage. Um, the solar thermal is available in the summer when you don't need it quite as much. Um, in the winter, the dead of winter, it's almost non-existent. Uh, with the PV, it doesn't matter because you're you're annualizing uh, your your consumption and just using the grid for a battery, so it's it's uh, it's very seamless. The the um, solar thermal has some maintenance associated with it. Even a simple system, which which is all I would advocate now, and. It, um, and some maintenance where where the the uh, the PV is uh, really plug and play and, and quite uh, uh, you know it's, it's it's actually really fun just put it in forget it and just watch watch the the meter go up every day um, so just a, another summary of just comparing the the uh, solar thermal and and the PV on the, on the three uh, net zero projects so far the the um, in the Belgravia house, we decided not to do any solar thermal. We're going 100% PV, and um, that, that will be a very interesting uh, um, comparison when we when we get to do the, the uh, uh, get get some numbers back on them. We're starting to get some back on Conrad's house and uh, and Riverdale. Uh, we're we just need to take some time to put them together. So I'm very excited to see what happens. So so this is this is an example of really why not to. Um, I mean, you can see the Riverdale system. We've got this enormous array. We've got enough energy or enough energy collected in the summer to heat the whole block uh, with domestic hot water, and yet not enough to 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 keep us warm in in January and you know beginning of February. So it's it's uh, we've got too much hardware chasing too little energy. Um, the the Mill Creek House we we we've got a three collector system with a small amount of space heating, and working much better. But but I think the optimal system is a is a two collector uh, domestic hot water system.